When I say compression, you might think of data compression, which is the kind of compression where you have some information uh, and you want to store it in a more compact way so that it takes up less space on a disk or a memory card in a computer. But today, that's not the kind of compression we're going to talk about. Today, we're going to talk about something called dynamic range compression, which is um, an audio processing technique that is used a lot in all kinds of different things, including this video. Let's start off by taking a look at an audio track that I have recorded. To be more specific, the audio track of the intro of this video. So here's what it looks like. Okay, on the vertical axis, we've got intensity, amplitude, and on the horizontal axis, we've got time. What you'll immediately notice about this audio track is that throughout it, the intensity changes a lot. There are all kinds of peaks and valleys. It's not a constant loudness. Um, and that makes sense because a person speaking, the intensity changes all the time in that situation. And it's not just with people speaking, it's also with music and, and any kind of sound we record. The intensity is constantly changing. And there is a term for that, and it's called dynamic range. Dynamic range is the term that is used to describe the difference between the biggest peak and the lowest valley in an audio recording. So it's the difference between the loudest and the quietest parts of the recording. Now, this recording, since it came straight from the microphone and hasn't been modified or processed at all, it has maximum dynamic range. There is quite a big difference between the largest peaks and the lowest valleys, as you can see. Now, sometimes this is exactly what you want. In some situations, you might want to have a lot of dynamic range, but most of the time, you do not want a lot of dynamic range. Um, and then you use compression. Compression is a tool that you can use to reduce the dynamic range of audio. And before we take a look at how this tool works, let's see why you would want to do this. So right now, I have turned off all of the compression on this video. So you're listening to my voice without any dynamic range compression. And you can hear it sounds different. It sounds sharper, maybe even kind of annoying at some point when I say the letter S, for example. When I say an S, it sounds quite sharp and loud. Um, and in, in these kinds of videos, it doesn't even matter that much because I'm not talking very loudly, I'm not shouting into the microphone, etc. But imagine this was a, a TV show or a radio show and, and there were some more people in this room and we were chatting about all kinds of things and maybe someone starts laughing um, or maybe someone screams into their microphone. You get all these loud sounds that would be very annoying to listen to, like you'd get a shock in your ears if somebody starts laughing very loudly. And this is when you'd use um, dynamic range compression. This is why when making videos and radio shows, people use compressors to limit the dynamic range a bit so that it's more pleasant to listen to. So how is it done? Well, in order to demonstrate that, let's actually go onto the computer um, and I'll show you how it works. So right here, I've got the audio track from the intro of this video. And as you can see, because there are all these, these peaks, this hasn't been compressed yet. So we're now going to apply the compression to this track. So I start off by selecting the track, going to Effect, and clicking Compressor. That'll open up this window, and that window allows us to apply the settings for our compressor. The first setting you'll encounter is the threshold. The threshold determines the level at which the compressor starts working. So currently it's set to minus 25 dB, meaning that the compressor will be applied to anything that is louder than minus 25 dB. And this happens to be a nice setting for my audio recordings. The noise floor doesn't really matter for now. The next important setting is the ratio. The ratio determines how strong the compressor is. So we can see what the ratio does in this graph up here. Okay, In this graph, this horizontal axis represents the input signal. So this is the level of the signal that comes into the compressor. And this represents the level of the signal when it has come out of the compressor, when the compression has been applied to it. 
So you can now see that at minus 25, the compressor starts working and anything louder than minus 25 gets compressed, gets made quieter by the compressor. You can see that because the line gets less steep. But by increasing this ratio, we make the compressor stronger. We make this line become flatter and flatter. And so the way this ratio works is 2 to 1 means that when the signal, the original signal, goes 2 dB over the threshold, it's reduced to being 1 dB over the threshold. If I set it to 6 to 1, for example, it means that when the signal goes 6 dB over the threshold, it reduced, it's reduced to 1 dB over the threshold. So the higher this first number is, the stronger the compression becomes. Eventually, if it says infinity to 1, what we've made is a flat line. So anything above minus 25 just becomes minus 25, regardless of how loud it used to be. In which case, we wouldn't call it a compressor. We would then call it a limiter. For now, I'm going to set it to 2 to 1 because that ratio fits my videos pretty well. Then we've also got attack and release time, and it means exactly what you think they mean. This refers to how much time it takes for the compressor to start acting and stop acting. So with this setting, it takes 0.10 seconds for the compressor to start working when the signal goes over minus 25 dB. So when this audio track goes over minus 25, it takes 0.10 seconds for the compressor to start working and start doing its work. And after that, it takes a second for the compressor to stop working. I've set them to the lowest possible values because I hate the sound of a long attack and release time. Finally, there is this button right here which says make up gain for 0 dB after compressing, which refers to normalizing the signal. So what this does is after it's compressed all of the louder bits down and made the dynamic range smaller, it'll then stretch out the entire signal to normalize it to 0 dB. Uh, but that's usually, that usually causes a loss of quality, so I do not tick that box. Then I can simply click OK. It'll then apply the compression, and as you can see, the graph looks a lot flatter now. So as you can see, dynamic range compression is very easy to do. Um, and that's also why it's used a lot. And sometimes it's used inappropriately, because you should be very careful about when you use dynamic range compression, and also about how much dynamic range compression you use. Um, on speech, for example, if you use a load of it, if you use a ton of compression, it starts to sound annoying on its own because you hear the level changing all the time. It starts to become very obvious and then you might as well have uncompressed audio because that's less annoying to listen to than overly compressed audio. Um, but on music, it's especially tricky. In music, you can use compression in an appropriate way. However, it's very easy to ruin music by using too much compression. A lot of music that comes out nowadays has a lot of dynamic range compression in it, and that makes it sound pretty unnatural. In music, for some elements, dynamic range is incredibly important, especially for things like drums and other percussion instruments. And in those cases, it can be a big mistake to use too much dynamic range compression. I'm not saying we shouldn't use any compression at all in music, but I am saying you should be very careful if you're ever use, mixing music or whatever and you decide to use dynamic range compression. Be very careful because it's easy to screw up. It's really, really easy to screw up. Anyway, that's what dynamic range compression is. That's how it's used. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and of course, thank you for watching.